What's going on everyone? Welcome to Robinson Motorsports. In this box, I got a set of wheels from KKE Racing. Stick around. So I looked around a lot for 2010, 2012, 2013 and up uh, wheels for a YZ250F and I pretty much came up with 600, 650 if I were to build a set. Um, Tusk for uh, Rocky Mountain just keeps getting pushed on back order, pushed on back order, pushed on back order. Uh, I couldn't find a OEM front hub for the price that I kind of wanted. Even if I were to get um, 250 or 450F wheels, so I would still have to lace an 18 to it. So I mean, I'm still spending 150 bucks there for a hoop and spokes. So I did some shopping around. I found this company called KKE Racing. I wasn't sure where they're out of. You can't find much information or reviews on their wheels. Uh, I asked a couple guys that I know that own shops around here and other places of the country in the U.S. And they said that they've seen them on bikes and they really haven't heard anything bad about them. But they haven't heard anything at all about them. Looking on their website, there's a sale that was going on. 429 425 they were for front and rear with bearings. Uh, no rotors, no sprockets, bearing spacers, uh, complete hubs, spokes, wheels, laced up, ready to go. What information I did find on them said that they're actually really ready to go. Ride them once or twice, check your spoke torque, and then they're good to go. So I ended up buying a set, and let's just open it up here. First thing I like to note is right here, 2118, they're the cast hubs. They're not the billet ones, they're cast, so they were a little bit cheaper. But OEM ones are cast. I'm not too worried about it. They, uh, they fit YZ125, YZ250s, 1999 to 2020, 2021 probably as well, because they had the same size axles. YZF250s, 01 to 2020, and YZ450F, 2003 to 2020. Now you think about that, there's a lot of different hub or um, axle sizes through those ranges, and there's no possible way that one set of wheels could fit all of those bikes when there's such a big controversy going between 22 25 millimeter uh, rear axles and what was it 20 and 22 millimeter front axles so if you read on their website they come with different spacers this and that and like you got to kind of dig through their website it's not a bad website it's just the information isn't put really in the correct spots you can email them for information i never did i just ended up buying them because they were the cheapest ones and they were available Come to find out, they actually have, they're pretty smart in how they do things. So let's open this box and take a look at them real quick. The first thing you see when you open this box is this black envelope with KKE on it. Thank you for yada yada yada. And I thought it was like a little thank you letter or maybe my invoice. Um, there is a business card in here. Some of their wheels on the back of it. And the ingenious part of this whole thing. A diagram and a reason why you can actually get them on or they can fit multiple bikes what they do is they put kind of oversized bearings in them and I don't know if you're familiar with KTM's where they have like the the spacers that actually ride inside the bearings on the axle and they kind of touch that inner spacer well they did the exact same thing here so you can go you can make them a 25 millimeter spacer or a 22 millimeter spacer with doing that they can make one hub same bearings for everything and then it's just the spacers that you change out kind of a pain in the ass because you can't use oem uh, bearings or spacers but i think it was like 20 bucks for a bearing kit from them so 
I'm gonna end up probably buying one or two sets of bearings because they're a little bit smaller bearings in them down the road. And besides Project um, Woods Ripper, my YZ125, these wheels would fit on it because they come with both sets of spacers on it. So I could run them on there, take the smaller spacers out, put the bigger ones in, run them on my Franken Ripper. Kind of like something I thought about after I bought them. I was like, oh cool, I actually got an extra set of wheels that's gonna work for both bikes with different size axles. So that's kind of something to think about. They come kind of like, the packaging didn't seem to appease or appeal to me very well. Like they traveled well, for sure. I mean, there's no dings, scrapes, scratches on them whatsoever, but they just kind of like used limited packaging. So here they are, cast blue, blue nipples, black rims, the combo that they had. You can see the bearings are pretty good size. Spacers are already in there for you. They are 6190 bearings, front and rear, I believe they're the same. Yeah, they're both the same. So you could source those, but obviously you can't source the spacers. You gotta buy new spacers if they kind of wear out. So they actually put part numbers on the spacers. I don't know if you can see that. On what they're for and the size of the spacer themselves. Like what, right here, that's a 22 millimeter hole by 32 millimeters deep. So seals are also in there. You only get one set of seals, you don't get two sets. It'd be kind of nice if you got two sets, like they forgot and ended up giving you two, that'd be great. But rear's the same way, your spacers and seals. One of the things that I did find in some of the forums there, and Facebook, I don't know where I found it, but somebody said that they actually come with the nipples tight and they're pretty, and they're true from the factory or from the manufacturer. So I actually have a truing stand that I'm going to um, hook both of these up to and actually see how true they are and see if all the nipples are tight before I put it on there. And hopefully they are. So I mean that's one good thing we could talk about this. They're not bad. Um, you can definitely see where the rim is welded together in the front here. You can see I put a piece of tape there. Um, it's got a little bit of a wiggle there, but it's actually, there's no flat spots in them. There's a little wiggle, maybe right about in here. I was able to get a little bit of it out, but I don't want to mess with it too much because all the spokes seem to be pretty tight. So I think I'm just gonna run it, maybe ride it once or twice check the spokes and then um, try to retrue them then after it kind of settles and it wants to go where it wants to go after that then I'll try to true it and see if I can't get that little wiggle out if not it's definitely within reason it's I think it exceeds any OEM spec it's just me being OCD about it The rear is a little bit wonky for me. Um, I had to adjust it a little bit here and there. I got a lot of that out. I just think it's just the hoop. I mean, I've had bad hoops that I've laced up that I just cannot get to be straight as an arrow. Reality is you're racing on the dirt. So the, what it was before definitely would be fine in the dirt for a set of 400 and 25 even 450 dollar rims complete with hubs bolt on ready to go i mean I'm not too keen on the black rims but that's just kind of what they had i would definitely buy another set for sure we'll see if they last uh i'll be posting a long-term review maybe like a half season review on them to see, tell you what i did to them to kind of tweak them if i needed to so 
uh, subscribe, stay tuned. I'm going to mount some tires on these and get them ready to uh, mount up to Project Frankenripper here. So uh, subscribe and I will see you on the next one.